In today's episode of The Insect Hunter, I'm going to be sifting through a box of old insect stuff that was left in an office for a long time. Will it be filled with dilapidated insect zombies or beloved insect treasures? Let's find out right now. Well, I've got the box right here, and uh, let's just go ahead and start uh, jumping into this thing to see what we can find. So first off, right here, we have got what seems to be labeled as some scarab hunter wasps. I don't know, these look pretty cool here. They're pretty large wasps. Let's see what they look like. These were not preserved properly in some ways, you know what I mean, because they're just left in this jar, haven't been preserved at all. Doesn't even smell like there was any chemicals put in there. But let's take a look at these guys and see. Come on, whoa, this kind of scared me there. Anyways, look at these guys, these are huge wasps. And look at that stinger right there, just sticking out right there. <gasps> just kidding, it's not gonna hurt me at this point. And these things just were not preserved properly. It's like this says it's a garden spider. This guy is basically, a zombie, my goodness, this thing looks horrible. It actually looks kind of more creepy the way that it is right now, but I mean, it's just horrible. Like, look at that thing. It's not uh, not a pretty sight. But I mean, look at this guy. It's just not a good specimen. That's why a lot of spiders just aren't meant to be preserved. I don't know if this got left in alcohol for three years and then it all dried up so then it's all really soggy there but this is one of the reasons why we don't normally pin arachnids i think is just because they're a little bit more soft bodied than insects in some ways so maybe that's part of the reason this guy i have no real use for it i'm gonna just throw it away so you know when i first saw this so i have seen a little bit of this stuff before um, I saw this thing and I was like, what the heck is that, a turd or something? And this is, uh, it looks like it's some scale insects. Can't hardly tell <laughs> what in the heck is going on here. I think it's been overrun with fungus, so. But apparently there's some scales or something, you know, uh, in here. It's hard, hard to really see anything. Here we've got a couple hummingbird moths. Let's get the camera out here. Nice, some pretty specimens. Very nice, I think. Um, let's see here. These are very similar to the ones that were in my Collecting Hummingbird Moths episode. Um, I do like this cotton and the way that they were preserved. It's actually, they actually did a good job of getting them in there and kind of keeping them in place. So I don't even know that they pinned them. I don't know if they just held them in place or how. They I'm not gonna deal with it. I think I'll just put this on my wall or something somewhere so that uh, folks can see, hey, I work with insects. Scale insects by the scale. And my hummingbird moths up there. Well, so this stuff to me is pretty much garbage. I have not much purpose for it. I mean, that right there is just really gross how that thing's eaten out. So I'm just gonna throw this away, but I do like these little uh, containers, which I think are called like shippers or something. And those will be very helpful. So I'm just gonna throw that away. All right, let's look in here. Ooh, we get to get into the vials, insect, Let's see it says insect samples, glass will break. Very important instructions. Got some old wooden corks on them, which is kind of cool. Oh, these are very strangely preserved. So these are not even with alcohol or anything. Let's see here, uh, this one says alfalfa weevil parasites. Let's take a look at that. I do like these quirks and things. These samples are really not the best, but I mean, it's kind of cool the way they were stored. All right, let's see what else we got in here. Granary weevil, cool. Let's see here, clover root curculio. It's another weevil. Feeds on alfalfa. Pine needle scale. Okay, well I think that was supposed to be glued on there. Termite, western termite. A lot of these insects, they're just not preserved super well. I mean, these things are 
really old oyster shell scale. Colorado potato beetle. That's actually a pretty cool looking specimen. Let's see here, ligus bug and a nymph. Yeah, that nymph, there's more glue there than there is the actual nymph. Let's go through these a little faster. It's not like there's that many interesting things. I guess while I'm showing off all these samples to you guys, I can tell you guys a little bit about my new job. So what I do in my job is, a big part of it is helping folks identify the different insect pests that they have in their houses or in their crops. So folks will bring in samples, so they'll bring something like this into me and I try to figure out what it is. So, so that's part of what I do and then I also do some uh, graphic design and design some publications and just make educational programs. But I also get to go and teach kids in schools, so I get to take around live insects to the schools, so that's a lot of fun. And then this last one here is a say stink bug. Stink bug! Maybe I have to open it up and then something magical happens. Nothing magical about that, it just smells like rotting wood. Okay, well, I'm done with that. Let's see what else is in here. Got a little box here that says Hemipterin. Hemiptera and uh, quite a few damaged specimens. I'm not too impressed with that. Oh, wind scorpion. So these are like, uh, let's see if we can get it out of here. They have really unique and cool looking jaws. Mm. Hoping I'm gonna get to find one of those in this area. There you go, it's hard to see it, but it has these really big, thick jaws that are really great for chewing, but they don't actually like have venom or anything like spiders. Here is a 10-lined June beetle, cool. I always love to see scarabs. And I don't know why, but people out here in Idaho, maybe everywhere else too, keep claiming that these things get stuck in your hair. I have no clue, I've never heard about this before, but maybe, what do you guys think? Have you guys heard about these things getting stuck in your hair? It's like the earwigs thing. The earwigs never go in your ears, but for some reason people think they do. And maybe this thing can get stuck in your hair, but they're not going after your hair or trying to eat it or anything. So I don't know where that's coming from. You guys share your experiences with me so I know what's going on. Let's see here. Hobo spider. Which a lot of people have thought that these have been very dangerous, but that was kind of a myth. Some of the studies, they've kind of refuted them, so they're not actually a big concern. So there's not a lot of very toxic, dangerous spiders here in Idaho. These alcohol specimens have actually kept pretty good. Oh, here we go. This is a wind scorpion. This is a much better specimen. This is why you store things in alcohol. There we go. You can see it's got a large abdomen. You can kind of see that it's got these claw things on there. It's just much more well preserved than that other one. All right, this says it's a black widow spider, which maybe the color is kind of worn away on it, but I don't actually see any red hourglass on the back. Aggressive house spider. This is saying this is a hobo spider too. Let's see. Pretty decent specimen. Stink. Stinkarno fungus. Sounds like a spell from Harry Potter. Stinkarno fungoso. I don't even know what this is. Stinking fungus? I, I don't know. Great, there's some old fungus in there. It looks like a couple little turds. I could care less. Oh, nice. Look at these, longhorn beetles. It's actually really cool. It says California laurel borer on it. Let's take a look at these, how long these are. They look awesome. I wish they were better preserved, but I'm excited to look at them. Yeah, these are actually really pretty longhorn beetles. Oh, they stink. Quite pretty, look at those long antennae. Kinda reminds me of like an angelfish for some reason. Look at the length on this one here. Oops. Try not to destroy these specimens as much as I can. Man, 
man, look at that. Look how long those antennae are. Isn't that awesome? It's a really long antennae. These are pretty cool looking. I really like those stripes. It's really pretty. Oh, this is cool. Horse hair or guardian worm? Something parasite on grasshoppers and crickets. Whoa. It's kind of cool looking. Look at that thing. I don't know about you guys. Insects don't bother me or spiders, but thinking about parasites inside of your body, that's a lot more creepy to me, for sure. Red sack spider. Hmm. I don't know. Let's see if you can see it there. Just a couple random spiders. Doesn't look all that interesting to me. I mean, I'll keep it, but it's not like awesome. Let's see, giant wolf spider. This could be the same species as the one that I have that I collected. It's like a pretty big one might be I'm not sure it's hard to tell when the legs are like this to me this is a shame to put a spider in here it's better preserved and now someone could take it out and probably spread its legs but I mean I think mine looks just so much cooler in that container that I have because it's more easy to show off and teach people about it so I don't know trapdoor spider oh this is a really cool looking spider look at this guy Definitely has a tarantula type look to it. It's really cool. Look at that guy. It's pretty cool. I really hope I can find one of these. He's got such interesting hairs. Be a really cool spider to find out here in Idaho. So all this stuff gets me excited and thinking, man, there's some really cool stuff I could find out here in Idaho. And the awesome thing about it is that when people find weird stuff, they bring it to me. So uh, a lot of my collecting I don't have to do. People will just bring it. Here is some sort of scorpion. It's pretty cool. Look at that guy. He's an alcohol. Oh, a dog tick. That's cool. It's a large tick. I wouldn't think that it would be that big. I don't know what it's got all over it. It's got some sort of like cottony stuff all over it. That's from the sample it was in. But yeah, that's definitely a tick. Oh, and gorge tick. Oh, that's so disgusting. Look at this. This is a definite keeper. Seriously, it's gross. Look at it. Here's my thumb. It's my finger. This is a well-preserved specimen, and this is cool. This guy is filled with blood. And uh, that's interesting. Very large, definitely. Here's another wind scorpion. This one's probably the best preserved one out of all of them so far. And see, there's those jaws. You see that mouth right in there? It's got big, fat, uh, just muscly jaws. Just has, has a lot of power for chewing and chomping into things. These things don't necessarily, you know, get you with the venom or things like that, but they do have some strong jaws. And look at his abdomen. Here is a string, maybe a piece of ramen noodle or something. It's probably uh, some sort of insect parasite, uh, like a worm. It's kind of cool. No label on that one. Here's a small spider. It says American house spider. Which doesn't sound... Here's some wire worms. Just looks like larvae. Not all that interesting to me. Here's some snail case bagworms. I guess these are some worms that make some snail-like uh, bags. They do kind of almost look like snail shells. All right, let's keep going. Uh, we've got some peach tree borers. Uh, those look like wasps to me, so I think that is wrong. Those look just like wasps. Beneficial wasp, nice. It's so small and improperly preserved. It's not really worth keeping. All right, here we go. Miscellaneous critters is what this part says here. So let's try and 
pull these out without dropping everything. Very awkwardly pulled out. All right, let's see what we got here. Cobweb or comb foot spider. Sorry. What is that? It's a worm with a parasite coming out of it, or I don't know, maybe it's a horn-tailed uh, caterpillar or something. It's got these really long things coming out of the back there. Look at that. I'm trying to figure out what that is. Probably a horn-tailed caterpillar, some sort. These are. Diaraphis noxia, Russian wheat aphid. Cool. Pretty small little guys there. I'm not going to try and show those off too much because they're too small. <clears throat> Fungus gnats. Yeah, not very well preserved. Springtails. Very small. Hardly even see anything there. Those will be fun to look at under a microscope though. Pseudo scorpion. Oh, this one's actually not too bad looking. Look at that guy. There you go, you can see kind of the scorpion shape. Couple cuckoo wasps. Not very well preserved. Just get rid of that. Um, this is uh, some sort of bumblebee. It's still got pollen all over it. Issue with this is that this thing is so soggy now that it's been in alcohol. That's why we don't put hairy insects into alcohol. This looks like another one of those wasps, but look at it, it's, uh, it's been hollowed out completely. So there must have been a domestic beetle that got into there. Carpet beetles. Hmm. Mm, sequoia pitch moth. Huh, interesting looking little caterpillar there. Not anything too crazy. Never seen before. Looks like a squash bug of some sort. Here is some moths. Oh cool, it's kind of like a moth that makes its pupae in some sort of mud type case. Looks like the moths even came out, but kind of a neat little pupil case there. Kind of cool, I'd think. Clover mites. Uh, they're pretty much too small to really see. Just little specks of dust floating around. Here's a cicada. Holy cow, this thing got obliterated by a fungus. This is why we use alcohol. Holy cow, look at all those. This is like springtail heaven. Goodness sakes, there's like a million of them in there. Seriously, like look at those. It's like... There's probably at least a thousand in there, in all seriousness. Rocky Mountain Wood Tick. Ooh, that's a decent sized tick. There you go. Let's see it pretty. Flower beetle. Well, that is a mess of flower beetles, but it's just not very well preserved. Cottony scale. These scales look a little bit better to me. You can kind of see them a bit better. Look at those scales. Scale insects are quite interesting because they basically, they do have some stages where they move, but for the most part, they are just totally stuck in place. They're almost like a coral or like a mollusk or something because they just peg themselves to like a piece of wood or something and they create kind of a shell around themselves. And then they just stay there basically for their whole life and feed and beneficial snake fly. Oh, Raphididae. Awesome. If you've never seen a snake fly before, they have a really cool looking head. Look at its head. It looks almost like a, like a dinosaur. Let me get a better shot there. How oh, well you can see that, but it's got like this dinosaur-like neck or something. They're really cool. And these are Indian meal moths. So, type of stored grain pest. Centipedes with an A. Hmm. Really small centipedes. Not worth much to me. Clothes moths. Hmm. Interesting. Those would be nice to show people. Almost just look like little pieces of wood or 
very easily would blend in with a lot of things. Subterranean termite. Huh. Well, here's some really dried up termites. Really encrusted, dried up. And I think kind of the key thing is to look at that damage. You see that kind of... Uh, you can see there's wood, but then you see there's like that other stuff, which is kind of like the digested wood material and stuff like that, which is kind of neat. Confused flower beetle. And what good does that do me? They're very basically destroyed at this point. I guess it's nice to kind of show the damage they do to the wheat. Rove beetle. Oh, yeah. It's a pretty large one there. Staphylinid beetles. Pretty cool looking guys. I showed some of those in my pitfall traps and you can find them in rotting logs too. Let's see here, ash plant bug. Man, those are almost invisible. Very small, white, clear. Let's see here, book, oh, bark beetles, pines only. Pediogenus connectitelli. Oh yeah, those are bark beetles. Not super well preserved, but um, pretty cool. Bark beetles are a type of weevil, and they'll go live in the bark and have all sorts of cool tunnels and stuff. Oh, bees, alkali bees, sorry. I'm not very good at reading, I'm still learning. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't know why they're called alkali bees for sure. Just like bees to me. <gasps> oh my goodness. This is some treasure here. This appears to be uh, Stainless steel insect pins. Awesome. Those we will keep. Some of them, I don't know how good their condition is. Confused flower beetle. Now these are good specimens. Look at them. Maybe some of these guys I'll stick under the scope for you guys, but you guys have already seen these. These are the ones that were in my, uh, in that pancake mix I was looking at. And then here we have a house centipede. Oh, these are awesome. Look at this guy. So many legs, so many people get creeped out by these things. I'm glad this is the last one I got to look at so that you guys got to see something pretty cool in the end. So anyways, thank you guys for watching this episode. What did you guys think was the coolest thing that I found in this group of uh, insects and things? I think the parasite was the coolest to me. Um, let me know in the comments and subscribe and stay tuned next time where big adventures start small.